Okay, let's talk about finding the domain of this particular function here. And this is going to be an interesting problem because we got a couple of restrictions we have to consider when we're going to be finding the domain of uh, this function under the set of real numbers. So um, when you're looking at the domain, you have to determine the domain under what particular set of numbers. The most common uh, numbers for most, um, oh, I'd say, middle uh, school, high school level mathematics, maybe even to some uh, college level math mathematics is under the set of real numbers. So um, that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to get into this pretty uh, deeply. And so if you're struggling with the domain, the concept of it, we'll uh, cover all that. And of course, we're going to get into the specifics of this problem. But before we do that, let me go ahead and uh, introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over many years, I've uh, constructed what I'd like to believe is uh, one of the most robust uh, uh, online math uh, programs there is. I'll let you be the judge of it if you need um, extra help in mathematics. I'm going to leave a link to that in uh, the description of this video. So um, whether you need to take a full course or you need um, help with your current math course, my program can help you. Also, I'm a huge stickler on math notes. Just over several years of teaching mathematics, one thing that um, and you look for trends, you know, as a math teacher, at least I do, and one of the biggest trends is just you know, one of those things you could just bank on is those students who have great math notes almost always have great math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who struggle taking notes uh, um, or don't have any notes or sloppy notes or unorganized notes struggle in math. So if you're having a difficult time in mathematics, you need to take a hard look at your notes. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I offer notes. Um, I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video as well. Those would include pre-algebra, Algebra 1, Geometry, Algebra 2, and Trigonometry. Okay, all right, so let's get into this problem. So we're going to find the domain of this function, but first we need to understand what does this word domain mean? What are we even talking about? Well, the domain of a uh, function, and again, this is not to confuse us with the term range, right? I don't want to get this, turn this into a whole discussion about uh, functions uh, because it's a huge topic, okay? And I have other videos on uh, functions, but let's just quickly um, review what this word means, a domain, okay? The domain is what am I allowed to plug into this function, okay? What numbers, okay, numbers, but we're really talking about a set of numbers. What set of numbers can I plug into this function without this function blowing up on me, okay? <laughs> so blowing up. So we're going to talk about that uh, in a second. So you just think of it as like uh, fuel into your car, right? If you have a car and, a, and the car says, hey, just put regular unleaded fuel in my vehicle, okay, that's what you do, right? If you plug in uh, diesel or something else, guess what? Your car is not going to be happy. Same thing with functions, okay? So some functions... Um, can take any fuel or take any number and there's no issues but others we need to uh you know look to say hey are there any things that could hurt this function <laughs> kind of use these metaphors or disturb it and this particular function we got a couple things going on so we're going to get into that now all right so and by the way if you're not sure what the uh domain and range is or just things about functions in general and you need to cover and review that after uh, looking at this video, okay? All right, so here is our function. And now let's just talk about the restrictions that we have. Again, we're talking about under the set of real numbers. Well, first of all, we have a square root, okay? So when we're talking about a square root, you need to uh, realize that we have a restriction under the set of real numbers that you, can, you will be okay with zero. We could take the square root of zero, that's just zero and any positive number, but you can't take the square root of a negative uh, number. In other words, like the square root of negative 16, if you plug that into your calculator, your calculator is gonna say something like error, okay? So we, we can't, uh, we don't wanna plug in any number into the function such that you're gonna have a negative value underneath the radical, okay? Again, we're talking about the set of real numbers. So therefore, this two x minus one can only really represent values of uh, zero or greater. Okay, so zero or positive numbers. This cannot be negative. So that's one con uh, restriction that we're going to have to consider uh, when we're finding the domain of this function. Now, there's another 
one. Okay, now we have to go down here at the denominator. Now this is an interesting function because it's a fraction. Anytime you're looking at a function that involves a fraction um, or rational expression, you need to look down in that denominator. If there's a variable, okay, that's got a, a flag to tell you, hey, listen, that this expression down here can never be zero. Okay, remember we cannot divide by zero. So whatever, let's say eight divided by zero is a no-no in math. Okay, zero divided by eight is fine, right? We could divide zero all day long, and this is uh, going to be just zero, but a number divided by zero is undefined in mathematics. Okay, so what we have to do is to look for values that would cause these two situations, okay? So the way we're going to do that is just use basic inequalities, basic algebra. So let's take a look at this first one, 2x minus 1. It can be 0 or positive, so we'll just make ourselves a nice little inequality statement like this. I'd say, okay, 2x minus 1, you got to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to deal with that guy here in a second. And 5x minus 3, listen, 5x minus 3, you just cannot be 0, okay? So, you know, I kind of like to speak to my algebraic expressions, and, you know, this is how you make algebra fun. All right, so let's go ahead and work on these guys. Of course, you can see I already did the work here. So 2x minus 1 greater than or equal to 0, you got to know how to solve basic inequalities. Effectively, you're kind of just doing the same steps as if you're solving an equation. I'm going to add 1 to both sides, and then quality. I don't want to have any negative numbers in front of uh, this x, so I can just simply divide both sides by 2, and I get x is greater than, uh, greater than or equal to 1 half. Okay, so that is the solution to this inequality. Okay, now I'm going to show you all this here in a second on a number line. It's much easier to kind of understand that, but that's the solution here. Then we have 5x plus 3. Now, I could have solved for 0, and just if this is not equal to 0 bothers you, you can just solve for 0, and then that's, it's the, that's the value that x cannot be equal to. But I just put the not equal to sign in here. So we're going to solve this basic equation, remove 3 to both sides, remove 3 to the other side of the equation, and then I'm going to divide both sides by 5. So x cannot be negative 3 fifths. So these are our two kind of uh, restrictions here. Um, that are going to tell us what the domain can be. Okay, this is going to give us our guidelines on what uh, allowable numbers can go into this function. So the best way to do this is to look at this on the number line. Okay, so we have all the x's that are greater than or equal to one half. Uh, this is fine. Okay, that satisfies the uh, square root restriction. Okay, in other words, this part of the function, this uh, 2x minus 1, all right, as long as we plug in any x's that are uh, uh, greater than or equal to uh, positive one half, we'll be okay. And down in the denominator, okay, as long as we don't have a negative three fifths, okay, we won't get a zero. So any of these numbers would be okay. All right, anything along the number line except for negative three fifths. But if you look at this situation, we don't really have to consider this guy, all right? This guy can, we can kind of throw him out. Now, why can we just throw him out? Because we can't even consider any numbers. Let's just kind of look at this as a little wall. We can't consider any of these numbers anyways, okay? Because uh, any of these values are going to make our numerator underneath that, uh, that, that radical negative, okay? So we don't have to worry about that negative three-fifths. He's way over on this side. So basically, all these values this way, okay, to include positive one-half, are going to represent our domain, okay? All right, so now let's just go ahead and polish this up. All right, so here again is our number line, and here's our function. So let's just express this in a nice, neat manner. So all the x values that are greater than or equal to 1 half, okay, if I plug them into this function, I will not get a negative value here, and I won't get a zero there, okay? So all these values can go in to this nice function, and, uh, and of course, you will produce a uh, respective um, uh, output value, and that, would, of course, would be our range, right? But let's uh, talk about how we would um, express this. So there's a couple different uh, ways you can do this. You can say the domain, we can use this notation, um, is all x is greater than or equal to 1 half. So that's one uh, way you could uh, do it. You also can use what we call interval notation. So this is saying, stating that uh, at 1 half, uh, then you put this bracket here. That means this is also equal to comma 
to uh, the interval positive infinity. So basically, this is one half, and this this is heading towards positive infinity. So we can do it that way as well. So again, if you're not familiar with interval notation, you'll definitely learn it as you continue to learn mathematics. But this notation, if you gave this to me on your test, I would in return give you a smiley face, an A plus, and a 100%. Okay, so functions, uh, very, very uh, important in mathematics. And uh, of course, it, this is a, I would say medium size or medium level problem. You can get into all kinds of uh, fun stuff. You know, you can have like a quadratic equation in here, or you know, things you have to factor. Just remember, your biggest things. Uh, let's just go back up here real quick. Uh, when you're dealing with radicals or denominator, okay, just remember you cannot have zero on the denominator, and can you have your uh, underneath any radicals or square roots? All right, you can have a zero or positive value, and again. Most of these problems are going to be under the set of uh, real numbers. All right, so hopefully um, this video uh, cleared up any confusion you might have had on domain. Uh, if you like this video, certainly appreciate a gigantic smashing of the like button. Don't hurt your computer, but definitely please hit that like button. And if you're on, uh, if you're new to my channel, hopefully consider subscribing. Um, I literally have hundreds and hundreds of videos already uh, in my uh, YouTube uh, channel organized into various playlists that are there to help you out, and I'm posting new stuff all the time. Um, again, if you like my teaching style and you really want my most comprehensive, uh, most powerful math help, then definitely check out the links in the description uh, below. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.